up y'all it's your girl out of mine the one that lets her light shine no matter who it relies and i'm back with another video if you are new to my channel thank you for joining us today on this beautiful day go ahead and press subscribe so that you won't miss out on any of the spiritual tips the tricks and all that shit i'm your girl okay <laughs> and if you still don't believe me just Ask my light bulbs, light bulbs, where y'all at? What's poppin'? Welcome back. Go ahead and like this video so that we can keep the energy going, flowing. So today I am coming to you all with a very important video on a very special ancestor that I was recently introduced to within the past few months. I feel that it's very necessary to spread the word of this ancestor's name and his history because I'm from the United States. I'm from, I'm originating in Florida and I had no idea who this ancestor was before I went down to the Dominican Republic. And even when I got down there, well, some of his people, many of his people don't even know who he is. His name is not honored when it comes to the history of the Dominican Republic like it should be. This ancestor introduced himself to me. I introduced myself to him in a very major way. And I'll get to that later on in the video. But um, I must spread the word about him because so many of us don't know who he is, what he stood for, and the importance of him to this day. Now, I originate in Florida, in the United States. I'm not Dominican, but I did have the pleasure of visiting the Dominican Republic for my birthday. If you're from the United States, you have either heard about the tensions between the Dominicans and Haitians, or you know, you just, you've heard about it. Being from the United States, we're just looking at it as like a colorism thing. But no, the Spanish really are doing all, or did all that they could to erase the history of Hispaniola's indigenous peoples and the Africans that came to mix with those people as well. And if you are not familiar with the term Hispaniola, Hispaniola is the territory that Haiti and the Dominican Republic share. Haiti is on the west side of the territory and the Dominican Republic is on the east side of the territory. It was once one territory. The French captured uh, Haiti and the Spanish captured the side of the island that is the Dominican Republic. So that is why you have two completely different cultures on one island because you had a major French influence in Haiti and a major Spanish influence in the Dominican Republic. And while both places fought for their independence, it's not really known that one of the first rebellions that happened in the Americas happened right there in the Dominican Republic. And it was led by this beautiful ancestor that we about to get into. So people like Sebastian Limba Kalembo. I bubble to you, Papa. Okay, Queen Ana Coana, her nephew Enriquillo, Ana Maria of um, Bocarinigua. These ancestors, these protectors of our bloodline deserve to be remembered and their history deserves to be shared. So let's get right on into who Sebastian Limba Kalimbo was. Sebastian Limba Kalimbo was thought to be born on or around December 24th, 1510. He was born into the Limba tribe, hence his name, um, and the Limba tribe is a sister tribe to the Bandu tribe, Bantu tribes. So they are native to Zimbabwe and South Africa. 
These people knew how to read and write. Uh, Limba's father was a businessman, so of course his father taught him how to read and write, how to do math, science, certain sciences. The Limba tribe was also known for their fighting and tactical skills. So Sebastian Limba learned a little bit about how to fight and how to organize an army. This Limba would use later on in his life to combat what he faced when he was captured. Around 14 or 15 years old, Sebastian Limba was captured in a Spanish raid and taken to Spain and France. Around 1525, he was then brought to Hispaniola to work the sugarcane plantations along with many tribes. Many tribes were captured, taken from their families, taken from their homelands, and brought, of course, to the West Indies, to the Americas. We know that to be the slave trade. These people, of course, you know, they differed in their languages. They differed in their customs. They differed in their beliefs sometimes, almost. And so it was very difficult to unify, and the slave traders made it even more difficult to unify. At times, they'd have contraptions that kept them from speaking. They'd make them shave their hair so that, you know, the women that held customs and certain things in their braided hair, maps, um, symbols. I mean, they literally made it to where these people had to do a lot in order to unify. But baby, that's what we do. Anytime we see, it don't matter where I go, if I see a sister or a brother, what's up, boo? Thankfully, they were able to unify at some point and Sebastian Limba in 1532 led a huge rebellion that would set the precedent, set the tone for the next 16 years to come. Damn, 16 years, y'all fighting for 16 years? That's a long ass time, okay? After the first few rebellions, Limba and his group of Maroons, as they began to be called, um, moved up to the mountains of the Dominican Republic so that they would not, you know, be easily found, recaptured, and so that they could survey the land from all directions. So they could see if, you know, who was coming up to try to, to start some shit to recapture them and all of that. They wasn't going for it. Ultimately, they kept attacking sugarcane plantations and sugar mills, and it got to the point to where by 1541, only 10 out of the 34 sugarcane plantations in the Dominican Republic still existed. The rest had been shut down by Limba and his people, and the group of Maroons was anywhere from about 150 to 400. Now, the details surrounding uh, Limba's death are not so clear. He died either one out of two ways. It said that he could have been taken down to uh, San Juan de la Manguana and killed or died there. It is a very popular oral tradition that uh, Sebastian Limba died near the square. If you've ever been down to Santo Domingo and you know where the gate of no return is, the door of no return is, first of all, let me, let me say something about that real quick. There's no plaque saying that this is what this was. There's nothing on the wall that the slaves were walked through because they were walked through the wall because they couldn't be shown in the city Okay. We're gonna walk. We're not gonna get to La Negreta because it's actually a dangerous neighborhood now. And you can imagine the heritage behind yes. black people being stored there, danger, mm -hmm. bad juju, all of these kinds of things. There's no information placed up there anywhere that shows the true history of these people, of our people. Queen Anna Koana statue in the square has her writing which girl she was an indigenous mommy okay she was a goddess she had her own language they had we had our own languages and customs and systems we didn't need the europeans okay and she's like underneath him it's so sick 
It's sick how they are doing our people down there. She was a chief on her own right. She was not a chief because her male partner was a chief. She was a chief because on her own right, she was a warrior. She was a diplomat. She could speak several languages. Mm. Anyway, there is a fort really close to the Colonial Square near the wall as well. And at that fort, they say that on September 17th, 1547, Sebastian Limbaugh was taken, flogged, hung, and beheaded outside of that fort for all of our people to see. Now, although the details of Limbaugh's death is unknown, one thing is for certain. And the one thing that's for certain is the fight did not stop. The rebellions continued, okay? Limbaugh's people, the Maroons, were fed up. They weren't having it anymore. They kept fighting. They kept trying to gain their independence. However, the Spaniards kept bringing in more new slaves to account for the ones that they had lost in the rebellions. Their sister country of Haiti did gain their independence in 1804, period. That was the first black republic to do so, and they helped everybody else out. Jamaica, Colombia, Costa Rica, Peru, so many places. Haiti helps gain their freedom. They did try to help the Dominican Republic as well, but uh, the story that is told today is that Haiti tried to take over the country to be, you know, all Haiti. But we're not sure if that's the truth. What we do know is that the DR kept fighting and 40 years later in 1844, they did finally gain their own independence, which is beautiful. To this day, there's still tension, not only amongst Haiti and the Dominican Republic, but just with the people. Because the Spanish only want their history taught, it's like so hush-hush when it comes to the real history. So I did go down there for my birthday and my partner set us up on this real history of the Dominican tour and the girl shout out to you Ruth I'm putting your information down there baby because I want you to keep doing what you're doing keep spreading this good word um the young lady that was our tour guide she isn't even allowed to do this tour technically like down there you have to be certified <laughs> excuse me down there you have to be certified by the tour guiding uh, system because they teach you what they want you to teach everybody else that brings me back so we're on this tour and we're seeing Limbaugh's like mural you know in different places but his name isn't on it his statue is outside of the Capitol but again I don't think his name was on it um, we saw the gate of no return the door of no return and there's nothing plaqued up to say like this is what it was so it's very sad even when it comes to colorism i'm pointing out like beautiful dark-skinned dominicans and the tour guide is like yeah i mean yeah he was fine or she was beautiful but down here you know they're not really checking for people that are of a darker skin tone Look at that guy. Wait well, until I mean, we're on the him. way back to the city. They were some of the most beautiful people that I've ever seen in my life, any country that I've been to. And so we wanted to go see his statue at the Capitol. Now we pull up, whatever the tour guide, pull us up, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And my partner steps out the car, he's already starting to take pictures. Y'all, all I have is my phone in my hand. I'm not looking down, nothing. As soon as I step out of the car, I fight it. Knees first, right? So I fall hard on my knees first, and then down on the concrete. My whole body is like spread out. Like, I, Papa Limba made me bow to him, yo. And so now I have um, a mark, a permanent mark. All right, y'all. <laughs> Last little check-in. I look beat the fuck up. <laughs> Had 
a great time. I'm motherfucking tired, exhausted. Definitely gotta take about two, three days to recover. But the Dominican owes me not a motherfucking thing. Word. Different people have called it different things. I had one guy tell me that that's, this is the uh, mark of wisdom. My best friend told me that it's the mark of Buddha. Listen, they can call it what they want, but I do know and I do take it as a sign that I need to spread the word about him as much as possible. Just like High John the Conqueror, when spirits let me know that I need to make a video about them, it's because they want as many people to know about them as possible and for good reason. You know, he was the catalyst of freedom for his people. Our fight is still not over. We still go through modern day slavery. Many of us know, but so many of us are just like blind to as well. And so it's important that we continue to uphold their legacies, uphold our history. It's important that we grab our neighbor's hands and continue to build community because so many of us live in communities and we don't have community. So it's time for that. It's time for so much, you feel me? The world is, is crazy right now. It's time to stop playing and the ancestors never played. <laughs> nah, they did, they did. They had to keep smiles on their faces, but they knew what was up still at the end of the day and as we should. And so I am very honored and thankful of this ancestor please go ahead and do your research any further research past this video in order to get to know him and i'm so thankful for each and every one of you if you have made it to the end of the video i thank you so much for staying tuned we are all beautiful no matter the skin tone we deserve to be loved and love one another we deserve to continue fighting and staying strong because you know they ain't never they ain't never ever ever gonna win they ain't won yet <laughs> they haven't won yet obviously they're losing and that's why they are conjuring up so much fuck shit like covid and all this all the rest of this bullshit because they 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 lost they lost they forever gonna lose so Go ahead and leave a comment on what you liked most about this video. Go ahead and drop a comment if you know anything about Sebastian Limbacalimbo or Queen Ana Coana or Ana Maria or Enrique or all of the countless other ancestors that we should be honoring. If you are from the, from the Dominican Republic, go ahead and rip your flag in the comments. All the Caribbeans, go and rip your flag in the comments. I, I love all y'all, okay? From Florida, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, it was another beautiful video, another great time here with the light bulb gang. So don't forget to let your light shine no matter who it blinds, okay? Fuck them people, okay?